Hello, my name is Francesca Ferrazza and I manage the Renewable Research Programme of ENI. Today I will give you a brief overlook of uh, renewable energy sources. Now, what is energy? Well, it's everywhere. It's everywhere and in everyday life. We use it for, well, for this presentation, for instance, for our lights, for driving our cars, for powering your smartphone. And it comes in very different forms. But basically, we can divide them in two forms. Potential energy, where they're linked to the state, or the position or the nature, which is like electricity or chemical energy or nuclear energy, and kinetic, which is linked to motion. So what are renewables? They are particular forms of energy uh, which are self-regenerating. Uh, they can come in different forms and most of them are related to the sun or transformations of the sun, like the wind for instance. They have been used in some forms for many years. Uh, hydropower for instance has been used from uh, ancient times for kinetic uh, uses. Uh, what we're interested in and what has been growing uh, as an interest in research and in technology and in industry is the modern forms of renewable energy because they are clean and they are gaining much attention in the public domain. Uh, the re renewable energy sources we're going to talk about today are solar like photovoltaics which is the direct transformation of light into electricity. It's a very elegant form of energy or the solar thermal energy, which is the transformation of the solar heat in other forms of energy. And wind, uh, hydropower, which is both the big dams we know for generating electricity or the transformation of the ocean, uh, tides or waves. Uh, then biomass, modern biofuels, and geothermal energy. So why are we interested in renewable energy? Well, the basic uh, problem we have now is climate change. This is a famous picture, a satellite picture of the uh, reduction of ice coverage in the North Pole in September a couple of years ago. And you see the yellow line was a previous low record uh, in 2007 and the, the black line all around was what originally was between 79 and 2000 since it has been started being recorded. And on the right, you see the graphs of the increase in temperature at the, uh, the ground on the Earth and uh, of the increase of the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere uh, since the uh, Industrial Revolution. So it's very, uh, quite substantial and it's uh, uh, strictly monitored. Of, co of course, one of the causes for this, uh, for this increase in temperature related to CO2 and other greenhouse has, gases is burning fossil fuels, which is what we do normally for powering all our world. And this is one of the reasons for which renewables are interesting, because they generally don't contribute to the global warming. The second reason is that, yes, there is a lot of renewable energy around. Look at this. This is a, a, so a study made a few years ago by Perez and Al, and it m shows the potential of energy in the world. And we divided them, they are divided in two uh, categories, those which are in total reserves, and these are fossil fu fuels, natural gas, oil, uranium and coal. And on the, on the left hand, you see, uh, on the other hand, you, has, you see uh, the uh, potential each year, so the flows of energy. And you see the, the uh, dots are in proportion to the quantities. Solar, wow, look at that, it's really big, it's really huge. And in the middle, you can see the world consumption today, uh, which is projected to double about in, in, a, in around 2050. So there would be enough uh, renewable energy, and in particular enough solar energy, uh, so we, sh we, couldn't, we, sh we shouldn't worry about all the rest anymore. Why, why are, th are those panels not everywhere then? Why, why are we not covering all the world with with panels and, uh, and collectors? Well, it's not that simple. First of all, resources are uh, non-homogeneously distributed. This, for instance, is a map of resources, solar resources in, in Europe. And you can see, as you would expect, that in the north, the irradiation annually is much less than in the, in the, sou in the, in the south. And so the quantity of energy that you can capture is not that much. And uh, even if that solar quantity uh, is very big, the dot we saw before, in reality the fraction that we can use once we uh, reduce, uh, uh, we, we take away all the land that is already used or that we cannot use 
and then the devices we use are not that efficient, it's not that much. It is still a lot, but not all that quantity we saw before. Every study in renewables starts with an assessment of the resources, and there are similar maps for solar resources in the whole world, and similar maps for wind, geothermal, biomass, and in, in order to understand if a project or a renewable energy source is worth uh, tackling in a certain country or region, you need these, so these are very important. Still, renewables are important because a lot of people still don't have access to energy. A lot of people don't have electricity, like a billion people still, more than a billion. And double that number, more than two billion people don't have enough, uh, don't have access to, uh, to modern ways of cooking. Um, uh, so they have to cook in stoves using the biomass that they find around. And, uh, and that's a very unhealthy way of cooking. It's a major source of death. So renewables are important and they are gaining importance. Let's go and see in some detail uh, what technologies are available. Uh, silicon photovoltaics, as I said, is a direct transformation of light into electricity and it's very elegant and modern type of electricity. It implied understanding the interaction between light and matter and that was done by Albert Einstein in 1905. And that w that's why he won the Nobel Prize, by the way. Uh, current technology is based mainly on silicon, the panels we see around. And uh, uh, we see the panels and we get the current in our houses or in different projects. Uh, with a long industrial cycle, uh, which starts from sand to transform in uh, pure silicon, which is made in ingots, which is wafered in wafers, uh, then transformed in solar cells and in modules and in PV systems. And it took a long time to adjust all this, um, and all this uh, technology to the current standard, which is uh, was gaining very, uh, very much attention and is increasing quite, quite a bit. It's used uh, for different kinds of applications, traditional sort of rural elect electrifications for, for vil remote villages or for, in, uh, for cathodic protection or even for oil platforms, for instance, or on the roofs, uh, which has been widespread especially in Europe due to incentives in the, in the last years, or in utility scale projects or special projects. Uh, the, uh, the, um, the last uh, developments uh, in technology um, were able to drop the prices uh, very substantially, like 80% in the last five or six years, and this is a big improvement. Still, uh, solar photovoltaic is about 1% of electricity worldwide, and if you say the whole, uh, the, pri the total primary energy consumption is much less. Uh, there are new forms of photovoltaic panels which are being studied in research centers and at any as, as well, which are flexible and printed and have the potential for uh, further reductions in cost and different use. Another way of using solar energy is to convert the thermal part into uh, steam or directly into electricity with engines uh, using uh, mirrors or lenses. Uh, the idea is to concentrate the solar radiation on uh, tubes like you see in the, in the troughs in the, in, the first, in the big picture and the troughs contain a liquid, an oil or, a, or something else which transports the, the heat to a, an exchanger which in turn turns the turns, uh, water to vapor and the vapor can be used as it is for industrial use or it can be used to generate electricity in turbines. Um, this technology has been around quite a bit. It started in the 80s uh, and it's fairly robust. It's not as, uh, as widespread as photovoltaics but it's gaining interest and it's, uh, um, it's a technology which is suited for the Sunbelt region where the direct insulation is very high. Uh, so the Middle East and North Africa, Australia, for instance, uh, these are all good sources, or s Southern California. Um, photovoltaics or coupling solar, and in any case, with, uh, with diesel generators is something which is gaining interest, even for oil uh, applications, for instance. This is, was a project we developed at ENI uh, to integrate a diesel generator and a photovoltaic plant to, uh, to power some uh, uh, rod pumps in a remote location in Egypt. 
Now, the other big player in the modern renewable energy systems is wind. Now, wind has been used for centuries by, by, by mankind for, uh, for mechanical uses, windmills. Uh, um, but uh, the, the direct transformation of wind uh, into electricity is only fairly recent. Uh, basically, it works like a reverse fan. You use electricity to make wind with a fan, you use the wind to make electricity uh, through the shaft attached to a generator inside the rotor. Uh, so the basics are very simple. Uh, the, the complicated thing with wind generators is the, the dimensions. The dimensions have been growing steadily since, uh, since the technology was started. And now a blade normally is as large as a football pitch, which is quite impressive. And uh, operators who do maintenance have to go up there. So that, and of course, it's normally very windy up there. So that's the impressive thing. And um, elect uh, wind electricity has been growing very, very fast. Uh, and now uh, is in close competition with retail, uh, the retail cost of uh, um, en electricity for customers. The same is, a, is, a, is starting to be true for photovoltaics as well, at least in some regions, in the sunnier regions. Another form of energy uh, which is renewable and which is the majority of the modern renewable energy uh, sources is hydropower. Uh, I think we ha all have seen these big dams uh, which um, make the, these big falls for, for and flows of, of water through uh, turbines and, uh, and make electricity. Um, they represent about 3% of the total primary energy demand in the world uh, and, uh, and have been increasing in use. Of course, they are invasive because you have a dam. Uh, the, these dam, dams are very big. They can create problems with the ecosystem. For instance, the dam in China on the Yangtze um, implied uh, displacing about a million people from where they lived. And uh, uh, that's not always feasible. And sometimes the water is in the wrong place and you have no transmission lines. But still, it's a, it's a very, very powerful uh, resource. Uh, even more modern and still in, in its infancy is uh, the, the technology, all the technologies which are related with uh, using waves, tides, and anything you can think of in the sea or in the ocean, like um, uh, gradient, temperature gradients or salinity gradients. Uh, there are several examples and several pilot projects are all around the world. They have been studied for quite a while. Uh, in reality, only a few have come to the pilot stage, uh, one in Portugal uh, um, and one is planned in Scotland. Uh, they all use the principle of, uh, uh, of uh, rotating um, elements for the tides, for instance, or the currents, submarine currents, or they have buoyant approaches for the waves and uh, other more sophisticated approaches for salinity and temperature. Um, there is hope for uh, some developments in this, uh, in this area. Biomass and biofuel, uh, compared to the other forms of energy we have seen so far, biomass and biofuels um, do contribute to uh, CO2 emissions, but because the plants have already absorbed uh, CO2 from the atmosphere, they are quasi-neutral. And so they are, uh, um, they are a good part of, uh, of the energy mix. Biomass used in traditional way, like you see there for cooking in, uh, in, uh, in developing countries, um, is the majority of the, re the renewable energy contribution to the primary energy mix at the moment. Uh, we have about 80% fossil fuels, including nuclear, um, which is not properly fossil, but, uh, and 20% uh, about of renewables, of which 13% is cooking with traditional biomass, so that's not particularly attractive. Uh, what is uh, happening now is that uh, biomass can be used to do electricity in more modern uh, valorization thermal plants, or it can be transformed with, uh, via chemical or thermal pro processes into fuels, into biofuels. And depending on the source of biomass, if it's not in competition with the food chain or with land and agriculture, then uh, it, uh, it is a, a very valuable contribution that it is growing 
and there are also regulatory systems and mandatory uh, rules in Europe, for, for instance, to use it. Especially if you can use waste, uh, like um, s uh, solid waste from, uh, from cities or waste from agricultural use, then the transformation, for instance, via fermentation processes or via thermochemical processes is a, um, is a very attractive route, and it is happening. Another form of energy which is not new is geothermal energy, and uh, this is, uh, in, in reality, it's the only one which is not directly linked with the sun some way or another, because crops grow because of the sun, wind is caused by the sun, water displacement is often caused by sun, uh, and, and solar panels, of course, and sun uh, are directly used. Geothermal energy comes from, from the earth, from, from deep in the earth, and uh, in some places it's, uh, it's a, a very valuable and attractive form of energy, for instance, uh, in, in the US uh, or in some parts of Europe. Uh, and it has been used to generate electricity with turbines uh, quite extensively and for, for a long time. The investments, in, initial investments in the plants are expensive, but then after that the operating costs are fairly low and it is expanding. There are uh, potentials in, in the Philippine Islands, for instance, but may, most of it is in the US. We've talked about the, the sources, but now, of course, expanding the technologies and, as I said, the resources are where they want to be, not where, they, but where we want them to be, it imposes also rethinking grids. Uh, this is a, a picture from, from a, a very famous study in which a number of science scientists and uh, uh, industrial people imagined connecting Europe and North Africa through uh, new, uh, new grids and new connection systems, generating a lot of uh, power, possibly 100% of the electricity needed in Europe and in Africa via renewable energy sources using the sun where it's sunny, the wind where it's windy, and uh, connecting them with uh, low loss, high voltage, um, DC transmission systems, which are not the norm. But even if we, we don't go so ahead, the transmission lines we know now, the AC ones, are not perfectly suited for renewable energy, which has a major limitation. Normally it's intermittent, also, uh, apart from being inhomogeneously uh, distributed. So the sun shines only at, uh, in, during the day, and the wind is not, not always predict predictable. And so um, it, it is important to have generation uh, tuned to the needs of the, of the grid, but also the grid tuned to the uh, potentials of the, of, the, of the generation systems. This also calls for another important option, which is storage. Energy storage is a very important thing, together with the transmission and the generation, because uh, we need energy all day, all night, and we uh, we need to make sure that we don't go in uh, over capacity or under capacity. For instance, the strong additions of solar and wind energy in the south of Italy have, uh, have provoked some imbalance on, on, the, on the line. This is more work for technology improvements. So, um, pros and cons of renewable energy sources. As we said, most of them provide unlimited supply. The fuel is for free and they are uh, widely available. They can, uh, they can uh, provide energy independence. If we think of countries which don't have energy or which import energy, like Japan has a strong uh, solar program. F uh, it's been running for years and they don't have their own resources. Costs are reducing. I said photovoltaics, but wind also has reduced quite substantially. And generally, they are not hazardous to the environment. They don't pollute and they don't contribute to the global GA, uh, um, greenhouse gas emissions. On the other hand, they need management to avoid uh, depletion, uh, especially if you pa talk of biomass or geothermal. I mean, you have to be uh, careful of what, how you use your, your land with biomass. And uh, the electricity grid, the electricity tr system on its whole needs to be transformed if a, a big percentage of the electricity is done by renewables. It's still expensive, yes it is, and normally you have to do the investment upfront, which is, uh, which is a financial problem as well. 
And some of these installations do require a lot of land. You've seen in the pictures that there are big extensions. Uh, normally for a solar park you need, uh, of one megawatt, you need about two hectares. That's a lot. And it can be invasive from, from a visual point of view. Still, uh, the pros are, are quite strong. Um, let me tell you about some myths about renewables which turn out not to be true. Uh, some people say that solar panels will never pay back their energy debt. Well, that's not true. In about a year now, a year and a half, the solar panel has produced the energy which was needed to produce it. After that, and it lives for at least 25 years, it just produces for free. Wind farms are noisy. A lot of people say that. But what about coal pl power plants? It dep depends where you live, really. And other people say that wind turbines harm uh, birds, that they in interfere with the birds and, and bats. Well, of course, it happens. It does happen. But industrial, heavy industries are much worse on the ecosystem. So um, we, um, we're convinced that uh, renew renewable energies are going to grow. And some uh, ob observators and some analysts do predict that renewable energy sources will be a substantial part of the energy mix in a few decades. Technology needs to be developed, and this is what the world is doing, uh, the science and technology world is doing, to reduce the cost and increase the re reliability. Um, uh, and then, of course, regulatory systems need to uh, introduce uh, a or reduce the non-technical barriers. And with this, I thank you for your attention.